Good morning, and thank you for coming together for this very special presentation. I welcome our guests, Reggie Groves, our chair of the Board of Trustees. Trustees, Mary Lou Leheimer. <laughs> donors, alumni, parents, and members of the press. Girls, sitting next to you is someone who will be your friend, not just for your years at Foxcroft, but throughout your life. This is one of the greatest gifts of a Foxcroft education, one I can already see in your daily interactions with one another, lifelong bonds with other Foxcroft girls and with the school itself. You will show memories of the classroom, athletics, writing, and the dorms, and you will share our values of leadership, responsibility, integrity, and service. If I needed any additional proof of this truth, I could look to no better example than Ruth Bedford. Today is a very exciting day to be a member of a Foxcroft community. I am elated to tell you about one alumna who has indeed remembered us. A remarkable woman whose connection and commitment to Foxcroft was lifelong, though she graduated 82 years ago. Think about that. Foxcroft made a lasting impression on this member of the class of 1932, <coughs> memories that she cherished up until her death in June of this year, at the age of 99, just weeks shy of her 100th birthday. She was born in 1914, the same year Foxcroft started. It is my honor to announce to you that Ruth Bedford, class of 32, has given Foxcroft an astonishing parting gift, a bequest of over $40 million. Oh American secondary school so far this year. So it is by all measures a gift of great significance, one that underscores the importance of a girls school education and specifically of a Foxcroft education and one that will help to sustain it. You can be proud to be part of a school that inspires this kind of loyalty among its alumni. Yeah. accelerates our progress towards completing long-term goals and soaring to new heights. This bequest will more than double the size of our endowment, providing a level of security which along with the continued support of our entire community will place Foxcroft on a new plane. Ruth Bedford has allowed us to dream even more daring dreams. We can think more boldly about how best to prepare you and the girls who will come after you to be strong, confident, independent women who can meet the challenges of a rapidly changing and complex world. We can develop our curriculum to take advantage of our natural resources, including our historic campus, our beautiful rural setting, all the while utilizing the full range of tools that modern technology affords us. We can expand the experiential learning that has always been a hallmark of Foxcroft School and to ensure that your education is meaningful, relevant, and lasting. We can support our faculty to become educational leaders in the global discussion of how girls develop and learn. And we can continue to attract and retain the most talented students and faculty around the globe. Ruth Bedford's experience at Foxcroft reinforced her natural tendency to be a woman ahead of her times. You might enjoy knowing that Ruth served as a Red Cross volunteer in London during World War II. As a woman, she earned her pilot's license and flew her seaplane along Long Island Sound. 
and she had a passion for musical theater and horses. And now, since I didn't have the pleasure of knowing Miss Bedford personally, I have asked our former head of school, Mary Lou Liebheimer, who met Ruth many times, to tell us a bit more about the singular woman behind this extraordinary gift. Mary I'm really glad that McGee talked about relationship because that was really what was important to Ruth. The first time I met her, she asked about the girl, and then she told the story about the best day of her life. And it was when she was living in the wonderful new dorm, which is court. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, 82 years, and you need to know I was not there. <laughs> nonetheless, nonetheless, from that dorm, she and her classmates watched the original cover, the home of Miss Charlotte, burned down. And they were panic-stripping. And she talks about the two hours of angst, and then she talks about Miss Charlotte appearing after two hours to assure the girls that she was all right. And she told me that was the best day of her life. And she repeated that story and repeated that story. She felt Charlotte Nolan had taught her something. To her, life was really about, I, I, I love alliteration, for her life was about grit and not glitter. And she thought Miss Charlotte represented that grit and that she had learned it from her. I think she kind of tested people on the grit. At one point she said, well, you know, I don't think you're going to like me very much because I didn't do what a Fox Park girl probably should have done. I said, the heck with that debutante stuff, and I went to Broadway. <laughs> and she said, my dad didn't like it. He really didn't like it. <laughs> and she looked at me, and I said, well, I think I have something in common with you, because, you know, I wanted to be a jazz singer. But my dad said no, and I wasn't as gutsy as you. And she said, yeah, what do you like to sing? And I said, yeah, a little birth of the blues, a little hard-hearted Hannah, a little, you know, the second verse of hard-hearted Hannah? <laughs> and I went, talk about your goal. Refrigerate, mama. You're good. <laughs> One other time I went, she was driving her John Deere. Can you drive that? I drove the John Deere. <laughs> Testing my grit. I think the biggest test of the grit was the day she invited me for lunch. She was making the sandwiches herself on the counter with the free flowing bird. <laughs> I ate the sandwich. <laughs> Ruth Bedford cared. She didn't just write checks. She reached out to people. She had a life of service. And she cared always about this place where she felt she was able to be herself. In today's world, we talk about she found voice. But the reality is she found a lifetime experience. The last time I was with Ruth was Memorial Day. You all were taking exams, and I was in Connecticut meeting with Ruth, along with Mrs. Cousins. And I took her the Centennial book. And she flipped through the pages, and she would point out, still knew the names of people, some of them from the very beginning. And then she would test me. It was never just, let's have a conversation. You always test. <laughs> and she, would, she said, um, well, who's that person? And I said, you know, I don't know. Well, then you have homework to do. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth Bedford was an astonishing woman. She will make a difference to you, just as each of you make a difference to one another. It was a privilege for me to know Ruth Bedford, and it was a privilege, ultimately, to think she was my friend. Thank you. commitment to maintaining a close relationship with Ruth and keeping Ruth abreast of Fox Croft over the years. A remarkably independent woman all her life, as you have heard, Ruth Bedford serves for us as a worthy role model. Her gift is a call to each one of us to be our own woman, to follow our own passions, and to manage our own money. Men have been supporting the schools that they have attended for years. Ruth's choice demonstrates that women can also be agents of powerful change. Now Foxcroft will not receive this gift in its entirety for several years while Ruth's estate is being settled 
and its full impact will not be felt for several more, but it does accelerate our achieving the goals of our long-range plan in keeping with our primary goal of sustaining Foxcroft into the future. And the Board of Trustees has designated the majority of Ruth's bequest to strengthen the endowment, where it will do the most to benefit Foxcroft for the long term. We will also honor Ruth's passions by using some of her bequests to strengthen our performing arts program, to endow a scholarship in her name, and to help underwrite the renovations of what was her new dorm court. <laughs> it will be our honor and our responsibility to safeguard and to build upon Ruth's legacy and investment so that Foxcroft can thrive indefinitely. And just as Foxcroft nurtured Ruth's leadership, and her independence, so her gift will in turn help solidify Foxcroft as a leader among girls' schools. It will help to strengthen our financial foundation through the endowment, but it will also make us more visible, see the front of the Washington Post, and broaden the recognition of Foxcroft's name. It'll bring new families to our gates, it will widen our community and create an even stronger network of classmates, alumni, and friends who will open doors to educational and career opportunities for all students and strengthen our lifetime community of support. Now I'd like to close with a personal story, one that exemplifies just how closely tied this community is. You never ever heard of that six degrees of separation kind of thing? So this past January, I attended a wedding, the wedding of my niece in Chicago, and I met a woman from Minneapolis who was a teacher at an independent school in Minneapolis. As we exchanged school stories, I mentioned that I was head elect at Foxcroft School. And she gasped, and she, her name is Sally Berry, she said, oh, well, my mother is the best friend and uh, advisor to a graduate of Foxcroft who just loves Foxcroft. Her name is Ruth Bedford. <laughs> I can't wait to tell my mother and for her to tell Ruth all about the new head. So yes, that's correct. You heard right, before I even started my work here in July, I was introduced to Ruth and I was deeply touched by the powerful network of women who care that is Fox.